He's obviously a bloke who, uh, who, who doesn't just believe what he's, what he's given or what he reads. He, yeah. he's, he's working it out for himself. He's, he was a world traveler. He'd been around. He'd seen a few things. He also seemed to have a, a kind of a, um, uh, an understanding of the world around him. His father was in the British Army, um, and the family seemed to be kind of posted around. He, he, he was a, obviously a strong commentator. He was going to do his own thing no matter what. I don't think I would have been much different from Ben Strange. I think he had done a lot of things by the time he came to cartooning. And all those things, I think, conspire to, uh, to produce a uh, cartoonist. They have something to say and, and possibly, uh, dare I say it, a, a unique way to, in which to say it. He was in that, that, uh, that era of the First World War. There are key aspects of our part that are important to understand that have helped shaped Western Australia and Western Australians. We're an extraordinary mix of peoples from all over the world. And certainly before the advent of regular air transport, Perth was a long way from anywhere else. I find the nature of the cartoons that their connection to, to European politics, the extent to which he really is still drawing about these issues with the assumption that the Perth population knows what he's talking about was actually something of revelation to me. There's always been a tension between Britain and the various countries of Europe. For 102 years now, I mean exactly, there has been a complete and unending debate about what caused the First World War and who's responsible. There was this concern that um, Europe, particularly Germany, was powering ahead and um, Britain had been the leading industrial nation of the world, I mean, largely built on its empire connections. Forms that had kept peace in Europe for the previous 50-odd years no longer were successful in operating. In other words, war came because peace could no longer be maintained, it seems. Australia was often presented as a little boy, tugging at the apron strings of um, Boadicea or, you know, the British Empire, the mother empire. Young men in Western Australia sort of are pretty gung-ho when war is declared. You know, the peak of the gold boom is long gone and there have been kind of patches of depression or recession in the years leading up to the First World War. So it's also a job. When Britain goes to war and Australia goes to war too, um, there's kind of an excitement. I don't think there was any real understanding of the impact of technology and the industrialisation of war, whether at the first use of tanks. I mean, you've got a tank charging around, you've got someone on a horse with a, you know, waving a sword. Sixty thousand of our population um, of young men is is killed. By the 1920s, we've suddenly turned into the bronzed Anzac. The continent as a whole had been destroyed. The French sent troops into um, the Ruhr area of, of Germany to enforce German reparation payments after the First World War. A cartoon like the one on the Ruhr, A Dangerous Occupation, shows a level of I think reflection about this, which I found really uh, interesting. It's, it spoke to, I think, what he, what his readers were interested in, what they, how they were going to react to it as well. I mean, these things weren't being produced in a vacuum. They were being produced in this, in this community. The other one I really liked was the one on the Corfu crisis, because it seems to encapsulate the idea that, you know, here is Italy invading Corfu, infringing on the sovereignty of Greece, League of Nations effectively is powerless to do anything about it. French are in the middle of their occupation of the Ruhr and want Mussolini's support. So for fairly basic political reasons, they say, in effect, um, we'll kind of go around how the League ought to do things because we want Italy to support us when we're occupying the Ruhr Valley in Germany. 
it was similar in many ways to the types of cartoons you would have seen in, in British papers. We've got this very strong kind of bridge, this link with uh, Britain and a strong belief in the empire, particularly when we're so isolated. We need someone to protect us as well, and I don't know whether those people on the east are necessarily going to do much protecting, so Britain's really important. We've got that unique situation of being an island continent nation. The one that stood out for me was the yes and no of Western Australia versus the eastern states. What I particularly liked about it and why it spoke to me was that it highlighted yet again the division of... Uh, response to issues. You know, Western Australia was late to join the Commonwealth. It then voted to secede to leave and it had these, it had a different position on conscription. And I think for me, it just resonated. I suppose some issues are perennial when it comes to current event issues. Taxes, government, uh, what government's doing with your money. But the Australian people generally are very self-deprecating. We've got a larrikin streak that comes through in our politics and I think it also is reflected back at us in our cartoons. I guess from a, a city's point of view, we're quite proud that we have them. As we draw close to the 1918 conclusion of the war, 100 years ago, this exhibition is terribly relevant. <laughs>